Ready, set, go. Greetings, undetermined spectators of the World Wide Web. I am Tall Lanky Guy, and welcome back to Depression Quest. Um, we're, uh, we're, we just finished a rather awkward Netflix date with Alex, where things got a little tense when I asked how she thought, how she felt about, you know, staying in when she would probably rather go and see friends. Uh, and now it is a breezy Sunday afternoon. Uh, do do do. Will out Amanda, an old friend from school, is in town for the weekend to talk you into leaving the house for coffee and catch up. You meet her in a small cafe and talk about what you've been up to since you've last seen each other, and you can't help but feel like they're a lot more accomplished and interesting than you are while listening to them talk about their life after school. I know that feeling. When it's your turn to brief them on your activities, you feel anxious and ashamed. You give a very abbreviated version. You try to talk about your job as little as possible, and you feel incredibly boring while you describe it, despite her expressing sincere interest in you and your life. Amanda has, long, has known you long enough to read your mood and tone of voice. She leans into in into she leans in to ask a question while gently touching your hand. A look of genuine concern on her on her face. What's wrong? Do you insist that nothing is wrong and change the subject? Defensively ask what she means like that. Notice that your hands are shaking. I mean, if your hands are shaking, you might want to notice that. I mean, my hands just sort of shake every now and then. That's just a thing that they do, but maybe this is something a little bit more. It's such a small question, but it uh, but it feels like a blow to the gut. You surprise yourself that you when you realize that your tightly clenched fists are now beginning to shake slightly. Despite your best efforts, you feel tears begin to sting at your eyes. You try to disguise this by tilting your head up and praying that they'll suck back in. <laughs> She suggests that you two get out of there, and you feel mortified. She offers to go back to your apartment with you, but the two of you end up talking in her car for two hours as the words just pour forth from you. Amanda seems unsure of what to say at times, but she listens and rubs her back as you sob and talk. She asks if you've gone to a doctor about this, and you admit that you haven't. She mentions that her mother is seeing a very good therapist in town, and offers to ask her about it. You're not thrilled about the idea of going to a therapist, and even less thrilled that Amanda might be telling someone about her problems. But she persists and tells you she'll email you the contract information. Cool. And I'm glad we've got a friend like that. It's a glaringly sunny Monday. Things that your brother Malcolm is one of the few days that your brother Malcolm is in town and will free long enough for you two to actually see each other. You have a dental appointment that day, but you may make plans for him to pick you up afterward. The appointment takes a little longer than expected because your dentist tells you you've started grinding your teeth in your sleep to a worrying degree. Oh dear. Given how nearly everything in your life has been feeling enormous and stressful lately, this doesn't come as a surprise to you. Suggests that you try to reduce your stress levels. <laughs> yeah, just just you know, reduce your stress. Just you know, and uh, fits you for a night guard. It feels awkward and too big for your mouth. Harris looking at your puffed out face in the mirror with it, with it in. Finish up the appointment in a hurry, and leave about half an hour overdue for meeting your always punctual brother in the parking lot as quickly as possible and leave the building to scan the parking lot for your brother's car. You see his old Civic anywhere. You pass by a blue Camaro and jump as it beeps at you, causing you to jump in surprise. For, to realize it, but it's now in the driver's seat. You hop in the passenger seat and compliment him on his new ride, and he mentions that it's a perk of a promotion he's recently obtained at work. He starts telling you about how much more money he's making, how his career is really taking off, and how he's starting to look at houses with his wife soon. Just the bag containing the night guard in your hand, 
You feel yourself clench your teeth as you think of your crummy apartment and how long it's been since you've been able to take a day off work and worry about making ends meet. He's only two years older than you, but it feels like he's eons ahead of you in every other aspect of your lives. So, he asks, how did your appointment go? Did you, did you get drilled full of holes or what? A sense of shame creeps over you. Um, uh, routine cleaning, in this case. I don't know, there are just, there are some things that aren't, I don't know. I think in the heat of the moment, I would probably just say it was routine cleaning. Oh no, just cleaning. Your voice trails off as you stare out, out, out of the passenger's side window, head resting on your hand. There's a brief silence and you can feel your brother's eyes on you. You hear him take a breath, preparing to say something, then hesitate. Though you may not be exceptionally close anymore, you know that he can tell you're holding something back. You brace yourself for probing questions you really don't have the energy to answer. Hey. Why don't we get something fancy for dinner? My treat. You feel like a little kid again, being looked after by your big brother. A part of you prickles up and feels pathetic for this, but a larger part of you that is stressed out, exhausted, and grateful for the for the familiar comfort of family. Malcolm never presses you further that night and takes your mind off of things for a while. Alright. Keep moving. It's a dry Sunday morning. You grab your morning coffee and scoot your rapidly growing kitten off your office chair and despite her protests, sit down at your desk to check your email. A new message pops up in your inbox almost as soon as you do. Uh, it's from Amanda and you remember your meeting in the cafe and awkwardly bringing up your feelings to her. Subject, hey buddy. I mean, hey, sorry it's been a few weeks. I meant to get this to you sooner, but it took a while for me to get a hold of my folks back home. Dad told me to say hi, by the way. Anyway, I remember what we talked about last time I saw you, and I hope you aren't insulted, but I asked my mom for the number for her therapist. Don't worry, I didn't tell her who it was for. I think she's worried about me, though, now. <laughs> anyway, the number is that number. It's a really good office. You should look it up, into it. Talking to someone never hurts. If you're worried about money, don't be. They're one of the few that has a really good sliding scale fee system and won't charge you what you can't afford. I hope you're feeling better. It was really nice to see you again. Hey. It's still early enough that you can call and make an appointment today. Your kitten curls up in your lap as you consider what to do. Um, <laughs> it's not an option to call the therapist number. I'm gonna sleep on it because I don't want to. I want to disappoint Amanda. Also, it's a it's a good idea to get to get at least try to get some help, even if it doesn't happen right away. At least I'm thinking about it. The thought of picking up the phone and calling someone about this right now is overwhelming. Sure, you're having a hard time lately and have motivation issues, but are you really in need of therapy? <laughs> Shouldn't you be able to just get over it yourself? What if they put you on medication that makes you feel like a zombie? What if you go to the therapist looks down on you? What will Alex think about this? Trying to think about all of these things at once makes it feel like a very big deal, and you decide to take your time to think on it. The rest of the day passes quickly, and at night you have a hard time trying to sleep because you're busy thinking about all these things. It's getting it's hard to get any rest that night. Next, you can check your email again with the eye sand, I, with blurry eyes, blurry eyes, and a mewing kitten. Amanda's email is still there, seemingly waiting for you. You're more excited than you were yesterday. What? <sighs> Let's just call. Let's just just call. Be yeah. We'll, after wrestling with it for a few minutes longer, yeah. It's just the best thing, I think. You read through Amanda's email two or three times, 
then sit and stare at your computer for a while, while the comfortable conversation makes you feel newly embarrassed and self-conscious. It's also encouraged by the fact that she cared enough to get back to you at all. Sitting in front of your computer, you start to question things like whether or not Amanda sent you this number out of pity, or perhaps some sense of obligation after having listened to you. So her motives and val validity of her concern, not you think seeing a therapist would even be helpful. Yet yeah, almost unconsciously, you reach for your phone before you realize what's happening. You're listening to the therapist's line ring. Before you can bring yourself to hang up, you're listening to the slightly clinical but not unpleasant voice of the receptionist ask how she can help you. Uh, I, I'd like to make an appointment with the, the doctor. You manage to stammer out. The conversa conversation is quick and not be as unpleasant as you were fearing. And quicker than you can say Freudian slip, you schedule an appointment. But you realize appointment day rolls around. You gotta go. You gotta go. I'm totally sure, unsure of what to expect, but you gotta go. You've gotten too you come too far to give up on it now. Here we are. You have your first session with your new therapist, Dr. Susan Melville, a tall woman in her mid forties with a disarming demeanor and patient eyes with the start of the slightest smile lines. Uncomfortable fairly easily, which is a pleasant surprise after all of your anxiety over the appointment. You can make a second appointment. You're still skeptical about all of this, but figure you might as well see where this goes. The hardest part, it seems, was the first step. Yeah. You're still not sure if and how you're going to tell your family or your partner. But you figure you'll deal with that when the time comes. Either way, you feel relieved that you managed to see this through instead of being paralyzed with worry over it. <laughs> Even if nothing comes of it, you did something you said you would instead of flaking out or running away. Yeah. You're emotionally exhausted when you get home and sit into bed. You sleep better that night than you have in a week, and you're not sure if it is because you were so tired when you got home, or if it's because of the therapist. Well, you are seeing a therapist even though you doubt anything she says could make you feel better. It's not ideal, but it's a start. Let's keep going for a little bit more. It's early on a Wednesday morning. Lately you've developed a nest and waking up to 20 minutes before your alarm rings. And unfortunately, today is no exception. You lay in bed, each minute ticking closer and closer to wake up time and pat the swelling wave of ever encroaching. I, I know those, those mornings. Very, those mornings. Sooner than you would like, your, your alarm blares with caustic inevitability. Frantly, frantically pound the snooze button and then retreat under your blankets, as if the warmth comforter can shield you from the path of time. Must always have difficulty rising from bed, but today that simple task seems nothing short of Herculean. Uh, after several snooze cycles, you decide that you just can't deal with work today. You're incapable of even rousing yourself from bed, let alone going into work and having to force yourself through a work day. Not to mention, you've snoozed so many times, it would be impossible to make it in on time now anyways. Um, I would say I always think if I'm going to be late, I don't like being late for things. I would rather just, I would honestly just rather not show up. Um, these are a lot of things. You're, this, is, this whole thing is also an opportunity for you guys to see the fact that sometimes I don't make what might seem like the best decisions in life, but this, this this game is not about making, it's not about, you know, being perfect, it's about making do, or, you know, just, just trying to just keep yourself going, and taking care of yourself, and I think in this case, 
taking care of myself means just letting myself bed. So, I do that. In spite of the fact that you know it's your job and that you should go, you keep fighting yourself every step of the way. Every time you resolve to climb out of bed and just go, your body seems to get heavier and your head gets foggier and you find yourself unable to actually make yourself move. You grab your phone and dial your boss's number, hoping that it's early enough that he won't be there and you can just leave a message. Fortunately, after a couple of rings, Huevos mail picks up and you leave a message explaining that you're sick and won't be in today. As you hang up the phone, you worry that perhaps your message sounds like a lame excuse. The boss won't call or email you to follow up your, with your message, but you are now too foggy to do too much of any sort of thinking. Eventually you fall back and go to sleep, heavy and restless, with your knees curled up at your feet, occasionally repositioning as you toss and turn. I'm going to leave it there for, for today. So, thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're watching this video, having one of these mornings where you just don't get out of bed, it gets better. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, you can like it if you want. Uh, if you want to leave your thoughts as to how things are going, feel free. Make sure you're being respectful and sensitive to people that might be reading these comments that are dealing with this. And um, if you haven't subscribed and you want to follow along with this series, it might be a good thing to do. So, yeah, I'll see you later.